Hello, my Spanish galleons. How about your utility words notes? It's time to write down some delicious grammar rules. Now, you don't have to write this down, but just think about English, where adjectives never change no matter what they are modifying. For example, if I say the teacher has an ugly face, well, has is my verb. Face is a noun. And what is the adjective modifying face? Well, ugly. Um, ugly is an adjective. Notice how ugly doesn't match with face in any way. It's just ugly is there, and face is there, and there you go. Um, let's put ugly into another sentence. How about we have ugly shoes? Notice how shoes is a different word from face. Ugly didn't change at all to match up with shoes. In English, adjectives don't change to modify nouns, or regardless of the noun they're modifying, adjectives don't change. In fact, I can only think of one real except, exception to that rule. Maybe there's two, but I'll share one with you. And that is the word blonde, which actually, if it's modifying a male subject, would be no E at the end. And if it's modifying a female subject, you would put an E at the end. Um, most people don't even know about this rule and don't follow it. Um, but the rule is only there because we actually borrowed the word blonde from French, which does, like Spanish, changes adjectives depending on the noun or pronoun that they're modifying. Anyways, um, back to Spanish now. In Spanish, adjectives do change to match up with the noun they modify. For example, el maestro tiene una cara fea, which in fact is the same sentence as above. The teacher has an ugly face. Um, notice how the word cara, which means face, is feminine. And so um, our adjective is also feminine, fea. It ends with an A. Um, you might notice that the adjective comes after the noun and modifies it from behind. That's something we do in Spanish that's different from English, but we'll talk about that later. All you got to know right now is that adjectives match uh, the gender. The, if it's a feminine thing it's modifying, then the adjective will also end with an A and be feminine. But look at a different sentence like, Nosotros tenemos zapatos feos. We have ugly shoes. Same as above. But look how fea changed. Since zapatos is masculine, it ends with an O. Fea has to become feo and also end with an O. It's masculine too. It changes to match the noun that it modifies. Notice one thing more. Zapatos is plural. There's more than one. So we mark that by ending it with an S. It's not zapato, but zapatos. Feo also becomes plural to match. We add an S and it becomes feos. In English, it would be kind of like if we were to say, we have uglies shoes. The adjective changes both in plural and singular number and in gender, masculine or feminine, to match whatever it's modifying, whatever it's describing. Would you please, uh, you know what, why don't you write down those rules and examples well, at least the Spanish one. And underneath, put down these rules. Rule number one. Adjectives change to match the gender of the words they modify or describe. And underneath that rule, write this example. Es un libro rojo. It is a red book. Um, masculine libro. So rojo is masculine too, and it ends with an O. Rule number two. Adjectives change to match the number of the words they modify or describe, singular or plural. So, hay tres libros rojos. Well, now we got plural books. So, rojo becomes plural and ends with an S as well. Rojos. There you go. Class, write those examples down. Be prepared to discuss it tomorrow in class or Monday in class, lunes, whatever. Um, and have a great weekend.